So that's the dynamic skin softener. Uh, you can see that's done a lovely job. Let's play with uh, a couple of the new filters uh, just to see what they can do. Um, now, one of the other new features in Color Effects Pro 4 is that you can actually stack filters. In Color Effects 3, you couldn't do that. You had one filter, and then you had to save the image back to Lightroom, reopen the plug it plug in again, and apply another filter. So that did tend to limit how many filters you were willing to use. And it did, of course, mean that you had to commit the changes from one filter before you could go ahead and use the, uh, and apply changes from another filter. Now, of course, now that we can got this button here, Add Filter, if I click that, it gives us an empty filter slot. I can now go into uh, the filters list and choose another filter. So this time I'm going to choose uh, a film effects. Let's choose Faded, which is one of the new ones. And you can see this has given us, in one filter, it's done a whole variety of things to the image. It's given, it's given us a, a bunch of sliders too. So we've got brightness and contrast and saturation, all of which you'll be very familiar with. We've also got a haze slider that gives us a sort of uh, that old... Um, classic uh, glow effect, a sort of a, 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 a hazy glow. Uh, and we've got a vignette, which if we drag it to the left, gives us a darkening on the edge, or to the right, gives us a lightning on the edge. And we're going for, a, this is the faded filter, so we're going for a lightning on the edge, which kind of works nicely. We've also got grain built into this particular filter, so if you wanted to add more or less grain, now the way this works is it's grain per pixel. So if I drag this down and make it one, we're going to get one grain element per pixel, which is, which makes it very, very grainy. Um, if I drag it all the way up to the, into the hundreds, you can see here in the loop that we're getting a much finer, uh, when, it, when it resolves, we're getting a much finer grain. Um, so to the right means finer grain, and if I drag it all the way up, it actually doesn't add any grain at all, I don't think. Um, and to the left means coarser grain. So I'm going to leave that fairly high. And we've also got the film strength option here, which uh, affects how strongly the next option, the film type, is applied to the image. And that's what gives it this, these, these wonderful colors. So we've got a variety of film types here. And you can see as I mouse over these how quickly this is updating. The, the, the visuals here update very, very quickly. So you can try these things out. So I quite like uh, film type version uh, number three there, but it is a little bit over bright. So I'm going to drag that brightness down a little bit. I'm going to drag the haze down a little bit just to bring some of that contrast back. It's now looking a little overly contrasty. So I'll drag the contrast down a little, brightness down a little more. And we've got a, a quite a nice sort of color effect there. Um, and of course, these things are infinitely variable, so we can we can play with that to our heart's content. We've got a bunch of film effects. The the only film effects uh, filter that was there in version three, I think, was film effects modern. We've now got nostalgic as well, which gives us a variety of uh, sort of these seem to be more color type uh, filters and. Um, just give that a moment to, to render. It seems like when you first add the filter, it takes a moment or two to just kind of get itself set up before it can do these quick, uh, quick rollover renders of the of the how the changes kind of look. Um, so anyway, the nostalgic filters appear to be mostly color based, uh, not so much faded. Um, and then we've also got Film Effects Vintage. And by the way, when I select these filters here on the left-hand side, it's updating the filter that we're working on. It's not adding a new filter each time I do that. It's changing the current filter, okay? If I want to add a new filter, I've got to click the Add Filter button down here to add another empty slot, and then I can start messing around with what's in there. So at the moment, you can see we've still got that dynamic skin softener at the top there. I can still go back and click on that and edit all of these settings in here if I want to. Um, and we've got the Film Effects vint Vintage that we're currently working on. And this one, the Vintage, we've got tons and tons of settings in here. Look how many settings there are. 29 different settings. And these really do give you a vintage look. Um, you know, the classic sepia styles and, and early photography styles, uh, early printing. Um, and they work very, very nicely. So anyway, um, those those film effects plugins um, do a lot of jobs all in one. And if there's a particular look that you're after that's in that settings, uh, then that's definitely the way to go, uh, particularly if you're trying to make a filmic look. But that's not what I want to do today with my particular image. <laughs> Thank you. 
Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Please help support the show by using our sponsor's promo codes or by passing the promo codes on to your friends. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com. <music>